internally and we have to organize externally and we have to have to have to have to educate about our issues and our values and I think when we do that we win every time. Any other some of the board about the questions that were asked? Um, basically getting people involved who have no union background you just it's about education it's about actually taking the time and speaking to them one-on-one -on -one. and that's the same thing about getting talking to our current members union members who they're kind of there but they're not really there yet they're not 100 percent and then the people outside that are just looking at it and saying union 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 it's all about money and our benefits education is going to be the number one thing that's going to make the difference between getting someone involved versus someone just saying oh well i'm going to sit on the sidelines and just watch the news basically you have to first in order for you to educate other people you have to make it a point to get involved and get educated yourself there's a lot of information and nine times out of ten we're living in the technology age everything's online so if you don't have time to go to a meeting, if you don't have time to go to a class, you can go online and read the information. All of the union's information is online. So that could be a talking point when you're meeting with someone who's kind of iffy on unions, say, well, you know what, check out our website. This is what we stand for. These are the couple of the issues that our members are fighting for. Um, with the lack of coordination between unions, uh, the thing about that is Every union focuses on something different, different types of members. But overall, we all have the same issues and agenda, basically collective bargaining rights, benefits and wages, and job security. Those are the main three things that all unions really focus on. So, and that's why central labor councils are created. So all of the different unions could come together and say, all right, let's, this is what we have to do. We need to focus more together. I think what needs to happen is more younger people need to get on some of these central labor councils to say, okay, well, don't forget about this new population of younger workers that are growing in numbers. Maybe this is a good segue into the uh, workshop because I think in addition to what everybody said, the best education sometimes is the action. And the thing that excites people and brings new people in is there something they can engage in directly? And I think with the workshop, I, I think this is where, like I feel like Paula's staring at me to, to do the segue to her, <laughs> is the, the, in breaking out, we're trying to figure out, so what are the things that combine the excitement of Wall Street with things that might help build the labor movement? And I think the moment that we're in here is that education, that work is very different when people are excited and they feel they're on offense than when they're defeated and feel they're on defense. So I think the challenge for us is how at this moment do we engage more people in a bigger, better way so that when, because the one-on-one -on -one is important, but there's not enough of us to one-on-one -on -one this country to change. So I think we're then talking about what is it that we do that's exciting. There's three questions which I think Paula's going to go through. Yep. Um, and I think that's the thing that we have to say is, it, I, I think, here's what I think the rule for us. If we're doing the exact same thing we did before Occupy, by definition it's insufficient because it means that we're trapped in another era. There's something cooking, and we then have to put a microscope to everything we do and say, how do we supercharge it? How do we make it bigger? How do we make it more excited based on the opportunity that exists now? Okay. Um, I think we're suffering from a little bit of post-lunch lethargy, right? Let's see if we can, we're gonna get up um, and we're gonna move into groups. And here's what we're gonna do. You're, you've got questions to talk about, and the main questions you're focusing on are, what are the various convictions and areas of work where union struggles and Occupy Wall Street overlap? And then, and maybe most importantly, what are some new creative strategies and tactics union members and Occupy Wall Street organizers could employ, could employ to ensure both movements grow and maybe grow together? And so what we're gonna do is you're gonna discuss these questions in your groups. We're going to do a report back, but let's not um, limit ourselves to these kind of dry, uh, sometimes boring report backs. If you decide that you want to make a placard, we've got materials for you to do that. If it's a skit, that's fine. If it's a chant, that's fine too. We do want to have some way of finding out what folks have talked about in their groups. So you have about 20 minutes, and then we're going to do a pretty quick report back. And if you'd like to stay where you are, that's fine. 
This is the very last thing that we're going to do today. And it gives us a chance just to hear um, what people have been able to discuss together. So group number one, and do you want to stand on the stage? Whoever's doing the report back, it, it makes it maybe easy. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Tishi. Um, so our group number one, we just talked about these questions um, sort of informally. Um, so what are the various convictions and areas of work where unions struggle and Occupy Wall Street overlap? Um, most, of all, most, most of us felt that the struggles that unions face today and like the issues that Occupy Wall Street is really addressing are very, um, very, very similar. Um, kind of the same thing in terms of like economic inequalities. Um, addressing issues of like housing foreclosures as well as um, education and um, education inequalities and um, in terms of where Occupy Wall Street and labor can really like work together in addressing these struggles is possibly sort of addressing the issue of like a lack of worker consciousness in America and like in relation to young people as well like where young people have been disenfranchised in the job market um, and how that can be like a core like cornerstone, I guess, of Occupy Wall Street and labor working together um, over the course of <laughs> forever. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, and then um, as far as um, new and creative strategies and tactics union members and OWS organizers could employ to ensure both movements grow, um, I just basically made a wish list of um, things that I would want to <laughs> participate in and then read about um, in the headlines, including um, implementing general assemblies at unions and um, within young worker groups. So we have democracy not only in the workplace, um, but also in the union, uh, setting up worker councils and unorganized workplaces, um, providing startup capital for co-ops for like worker owned and operated um, bakeries, bookstores, like what, whatever. Um, uh, building alternative institutions that provide so social services, um, investing in housing co-ops like we see with the amalgamated in the Bronx that provided community um, in a democratically run, collectively owned um, housing co-op. Um, continuing to occupy banks, uh, divesting um, from the financial markets, um, and then student debt strike, mortgage strike, taking back bank-owned properties, occupying foreclosed, shutting down foreclosure options, which is some of the things that we've already been doing. And then I would want, I'm just gonna like say the general strike, that, um, because I think there should be a strategy within the labor movement um, to employ a, a general strike. Like I don't know if, like if we called, if somebody called a general strike tomorrow in New York City, like I don't think we have the capacity to pull that off. And I think like that's a problem, I think it like, needs to be a trick that the labor, it's the greatest point of leverage that the labor movement has, and I think we should like have that tactic up our sleeve should uh, labor try to do that. That's all. Oh. Oh. Sorry, I just want to add one more thing. We also briefly talked about how um, in order for labor and Occupy Wall Street to ensure that this movement, whatever it is, together grows, is that it really addresses community-based issues where these and where these struggles exist, um, and like the people who have been struggling with these issues for like, for decades, so. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm Tracy Hawthorne, and the first thing that we said um, was one of some of the convictions that are some of the convictions that are similar to what we're dealing with, with Occupy on Wall Street is there are feelings of, in Wall Street in that particular movement there are feelings of solidarity that make people feel welcome and open to discuss whatever they feel, whatever their concerns are, as opposed to being confined to the regulations and the guidelines and the stipulations that the union impose. You can't say certain things or be certain ways when you're representing the union, but when you're out in wa at the Wall Street, um, Occupy Wall Street movement, you're open. You can, you can express how you feel. You can say what you want. You can bring issues to the table that people may be feeling but afraid to say. So it helps that we have that avenue to turn to and to get involved with because it does make a difference in regards to 
letting other people in other areas know what's going on in our communities. Because everyone doesn't live in the same neighborhood. So how do you know what affects me may not affect her, may not affect you or someone else in a different area of New York or even other, er other states. So that is a, definitely a good movement in regards to getting the information out there to other people and helping to start make a chain reaction so that we can do bigger and better things. And also the solidarity is what attracted a lot of us to the, oops, to the unions anyway. Um, and sometimes after you've been there a while, you lose that feeling of solidarity in the, uh, in sort of the box-like structure. Um, the next thing um, we also, con um, the next thing we talked about was um, the material aspects, um, that there's no work. Um, a lot of us feel discriminated and alienated depending, for different reasons, depending on our fields. Mm -hmm. um, like my, um, I'm sorry, my name's Julia Getzel and I'm a um, member of the Carpenters Union. And in my union, you know, it's the, st the stereotype of what you think a construction worker is, like a big burly white guy. And some of us are women and some of us are of color and some of us are immigrants and not what, and sometimes it's hard to express what you feel in that structure because you you're seriously a minority in this in that sense and if we could bring that back um, to the unions the Occupy Wall Street where all that everyone's equal and you just the open mic concept in a union meeting would be great because it doesn't really exist for a lot of us even though whatever Robert's rules say it the reality is it doesn't <laughs> exist um, in the real sense. And also the idea that um, Occupy Wall Street is a physical space. Um, I don't, is that it's, it's tangible and it's real and it's not just, and you can go there whenever you want and it's not just an abstract thing that happens once a month for an hour or two. A lot of things in regards to the physical space, it, it doesn't have any boundaries. It, I mean, you're in an area where you literally can go down there whenever you want, you can get involved. If, like the young lady who was here earlier said that if she could, she would just drop everything and, and get involved with it. And unfortunately, everybody can't do that, but it is good to see people who may have had jobs, who left jobs, for whatever reason they chose to be down there, they're there, people who work. You're taking time out to go down there and get involved. There's no limits to what you can do once you're down there. You're not confined to a brick wall, you're not confined to a meeting time. You're not, you're not limited to just being down there one day out of the week. So when you, when you think about what they're doing, they're doing it for everyone. They're fighting for everyone. So it is our, part of our job and responsibility also. They're really challenging us to take a stand and be there with them. Even if you can't be there physically, like Natasha Isma said earlier, you can do simple things, you can do smaller things. You may not be on the scale of being down there, sleeping down there for nights and weeks at a time, but find other ways to get involved and make action because things happen in number. Mm -hmm. The more people that are involved, the more that is being done, the more that is being said, that eventually has a domino effect to where it trickles into other areas and it affects everyone that, it, that, that this city holds, even in other states. Everyone is taking a chance and they're getting involved and they're doing different things and every little bitty thing counts, everything helps. And the more we take time out to get involved and to learn, education is the key. If we don't know what they're standing for, it's not always about having a bullet point perspective, but just know that this is fighting for us right now, our children down the line. I mean, things that are to come, this is not gonna stop. Whatever's happening in the economy right now, it's not gonna go away. It's not gonna stop because Occupy Wall Street is there. It's not gonna stop because the mayor makes a decision to cut budgets or do whatever it is that he chooses to do next. This is something that's gonna continue to happen for the next ye couple of years, years down the line, because if we don't stand up and fight for it now, he's gonna, they're gonna feel like we don't care enough to get involved and take a stand. So we have to get involved and make, and, and make motion to these actions. Also, one way to do that is to have solidarity at work, like have sort of mini general assemblies at work. Just, that's really how unions were created in the first place. Um, I always tell a friend of mine, you know, movements always started at the kitchen table and in the same way it can start at the lunch room table or wherever you have coffee break or wherever that is. 
because um, it's really about the rank and file and not about the structure itself. That's true. That's true. So in our group, we had a lot of talk that's been covered by a lot of people, but I guess one of the things that we talked about that was kind of interesting, I guess, was about sort of the whole, I know a lot of people bring up politics and the elections coming up, and so you're talking about one of the great things that's happened out of this whole movement of Occupy Wall Street is for the first time, I mean, what we've noticed in the labor movement in history has been since the 50s when the labor movement started working with the Democratic Party, you know, got seats in the Democratic National Committee that, you know, it's been a lot of let's go get votes out for all these Democratic politicians who then don't actually do anything for labor in the future as in recent times. We'll go turn out lots of people to vote, and then they say thank you for your help, and then go back on everything they promised. So one of the great things that's actually happened with Occupy Wall Street is we've actually had a change in the environment in which people are now, these politicians aren't, like, we're not going to try to please these politicians. They're coming to people on Occupy Wall Street talking about the issues that are going on now, which is something that's pretty interesting, in my opinion, which is very different than how it's been, which politicians actually care about what people are saying at least for our perspective, and then it's almost become where they're so scared of what people are doing, with people occupying homes, occupying like down in Zuccotti Park and all of this, that they're now afraid that something bad might happen, so it's their self-interest, actually, like, I guess you can even say this is like the whole capitalism, right? Because it's their self-interest to actually go out and do, a, do something to actually like, you know, pass some labor laws, pass some bank laws or something like that just to please people. So, I don't know, I think that's kind of interesting. And so, you got anything else to say? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I think that exactly what uh, my friend here, whose name I forget, um, Zach, sorry. Uh, I think exactly what he said though. See, we're, you know, for years and years, the labor has looked at it as let's get our politicians into office. I think what Occupy Wall Street's doing right now isn't saying let's get our politicians into office. It's saying, hey, politicians, you're in office. Now you're going to listen to me. Does, it's not about, you know, getting out the vote. It's about you're already there. Now start working for the public. I think that's important, you know. Um, the only other thing we really touched on is just the idea that labor, when it first got started back in, you know, the 60s and the 70s when, you know, the real workers movement was getting going, you know, the 50s and all that, they, they weren't afraid to get arrested. They weren't afraid to fight for their rights. And in the last couple of decades, it's become very complacent. You know, it's become very, we know we already have this stuff. And the people of our generation, the people who are out there at Occupy Wall Street, we're there because we don't know that we have this stuff. We don't know that we have pensions when we're gonna be 65, 66. We don't know that we have social security. We probably don't actually. We're more sure of that than we are that's gonna be there. So, you know, it's, it's kind of come full circle and it's just time to fight back. Hi mom, you're not here, but hi. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, common convictions that uh, the, the labor movement has um, that overlap with Occupy Wall Street. We came up with uh, we all share this common conviction that we want to fight inequality. Um, in the labor movement, it's inequality at the workplace. For Occupy Wall Street, it's economic inequality for the 99%. Um, and the beauty of that is, is that everybody in the labor movement is in the 99%. So it's pretty clear that we overlap. Um, moving on to how we can, the labor movement and Occupy can work together to grow together, create synergy. It's really about, we have to create win-win scenarios. That's it. So the Occupy movement, they've had bad PR about people urinating in the street. Um, they have to brave the cold. Those are their, their weak points. They have to get through the winter time. The labor movement needs young people to get involved and they need more people to come out to the rallies. So with those two sides of it, we have to create win-win scenarios. So really quick, our, our local is going to bring down hand warmers four weeks in a row to the Occupy movement to help out their need, but then to help our need to get more members out, we're gonna you know, have a march associated with, all of, with bringing out, down those hand warmers. So that's just a small example of when we go back to our labor unions, think win-win scenarios. How can we benefit ourselves and the Occupy movement? That's it. So we're gonna try to do a skit. So I, I guess I ended up the narrator because I'm not in the skit. So one stand together. 
This is going to be quick, folks, but a little choreographing. So ones are together. Then the twos should be together. Okay, and the threes are together. So just so you know, this may not work, so I have to tell you what's going on. So <laughs> the ones are consumers, and this came out of a strategy session. The ones are consumers who are getting zapped with solicitation from the banks. The two are new twos are newly happy postal workers, and the threes are bankers. So let me hand it. Uh, all so right, annoyed. wow. I keep getting all these stupid things. Look, so much stuff I have to empty look, look at this, an opportunity to increase my personal debt. Perfect. <laughs> I'm what just going to dump it in the garbage. Because just throw it.